What's up, everybody? Wonder Tweak here, back with some more Life is Strange Before the Storm. Um, today, we're going to be finishing our part two of episode one. Um, so far, I'm really like playing as Chloe. It shows like a kind of like a different perspective than when we were playing with Max, and I really like it. So, yeah, let's get into it. Um, also, today, we're wearing purple spirit day. To show that we're standing up against bullies as well as showing our support for the lgbtq community and yeah so i hope you guys are wearing your purple today and let's get into it okay so we are at school and we are getting the dvd from steph and i don't know who steph is um, let's look around real quick. Well, at least not for now. Mm -hmm. Warner Brooke. How could I possibly make it through a day in this place without a little chemical assistance? <laughs> Maybe this play won't suck. Maybe. We decided that we were going to go to the play with our homeboy Elliot. Oh shoot. Okay. Max, you know how some things with mom seem like they couldn't get any worse? Ha, huh, the sad truth is I suddenly have to choose between being nice or being honest with her because I can't be both. But how can I be honest with her about mustache without her lashing out and f lashing out at me for it? And why am I the only one concerned about this hostile takeover of our house? Today it's a toolbox and pot roast. Tomorrow it's... I should stop there for a sanity steak. Honest Bill or Niceberg? And yeah, I know mom is stressed about money issues, but that still doesn't justify her horrible taste in men. Also, mom knows... Oh, shoot. Also, mom knows I've been skipping, which sucks, but in a way it makes me feel better about it. Does that make me a bad person? I don't feel bad about fucking off, just relieved that I don't have to waste the energy to lie about it anymore. On second thought, don't answer that. Chloe, the no good, very bad person. Max, so the mustache drove me to school today. Yep, that's what my life's become. Even worse, he thought the ride was like a tell me how things are gonna be from now on opportunity. I tried to shut him up before he powered through with his stupid lecture about life and war and I don't know, soup. I wasn't really paying attention. I had a dream about dad again. The one where I was there when it happened. It seems too hard. It seems to get harder and harder after each of these to remember what's real and what's not. All I can remember after I wake up is how much I miss him. I hope that never goes away. The, the Chloe who wasn't there. Or was I? That's sad. Okay. Okay, there's Elliot. Let's go see this guy. Hey, I'm at the picnic tables with Mikey. Thanks. On my way. S skip. Security hey, before skip. David. Stopped any gang wars lately? Not today. Oof. Looks like you did, though. Huh? My black eye. Ah, right. <laughs> Whatever. I did ask Justin Williams' mom to move her Mercedes out of handicapped parking. Badass. Yeah, you know how I roll. Mm -hmm. Firewalk show. So, I went to the mill last night. Cut firewalk live. You went to the mill? Wait, you saw a firewalk? You bet your ass I did. It was cool. Whoa, pretty wicked. I didn't know you were into music like that. Check it. What, like good music? <laughs> Preach it, sister. I'm in a band, actually. No shit. Really? We're called Pisshead. It's not a big deal <laughs> or anything. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to get our demo out there, but it's hard. Pisshead, huh? W would you maybe want to hear it? Our demo, I, I mean. For sure. Yeah, okay. Great. Deep fried storm 
something You say we got rich in love Rocky boat, rocky boat hard You say we got nothing You say we got nothing wrong Before we had lips and touching Couldn't help but think but anything I like it. What did it you was think? good. It's really good. That was really good, man. If Pisshead came on the radio, I'd turn that shit up. Same. Oh, right on. Awesome, Chloe. Thanks. I liked it. Miss Grant. Morning, Miss Grant. Chloe, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Hmm. What do you think of this hypothesis? That you'll be in your seat by the time chemistry class begins today. Hmm. Sounds highly probable. I wouldn't miss it for all the manganese in the world, Miss Grant. <laughs> your sincerity's overwhelming. With all the change that's happening at Blackwell of late, I suppose I can appreciate your consistent wit, Chloe. What kind of change do you mean? Well, the Prescotts have made an extremely generous donation to the school, which is good. But instead of going to support more science and mathematics, it's all being dedicated to the arts. Hmm. You don't think more money should be spent in the arts? It's not that exactly. I recently made the case that STEM programs should receive more support but apparently, our new donors disagree with me. Such is life, I suppose. Miss Grant actually seems sad. Mm. Things will turn around. Maybe in another six months, a new donor will come along with money for... I don't know. More lasers. <laughs> More lasers? Do we have any lasers? Sadly, no. That is sad. Mm. Hmm. Do not walk on the stage. We're doing it. I should probably be getting to class, but I just don't care. Did last night really happen? The internet says it did, but I still can't believe it. Rachel Amber. The drama star, honor student, popular princess of Blackwell swoops in like a Batman to save my ass and thrash to firewalk? <laughs> Either that was a dream or real life just got a shit ton crazier. Oh no. <laughs> Principal Wells. Hey. Stay cool, Chloe. You've got a marijuana flavored oh, bag no. of expulsion in your pocket. Chloe Price. Is that a black eye? I'm uh Yep. I hope you know that Blackwell provides confidential counseling services for all our students. We are a safe space for any issue. I'm good. It's the other guy who needed a safe space. From me. You never fail to conform to your reputation, do you? 
Miss Price, the sign clearly says do not walk on the stage. Such disregard for your fellow students' efforts won't alleviate your record of major infractions. <laughs> I didn't do it. He just saw us. How about minor infractions? How many minor infractions in a major one? This is no joke, <laughs> Miss Price. Who's joking? You've seen my math grades. Perhaps you will find me less amusing if I mention the various allegations I've been hearing about your drug use. You know Blackwell has a zero tolerance policy. I'm not smoking here. And yet if my olfactory sense does not fail me, I'd say you've recently been exposed to marijuana smoke. At Shit. home? Do I have to initiate a search of your person in order to establish the veracity of these allegations, Miss Price? No. That's what I thought. I'll look forward to seeing you in my office after school today. How does that sound? Um... Actually, no. Miles really has it out for me. I have to convince him it's in his best interest to back off. Actually, I did it off sir, of school. I'm gonna go with no. Ah. So you're going to mouth off to me now, yes? And mm -hmm. here I thought your well of witticisms had finally run dry. See, the thing about won. tolerance <laughs> is that you have to build it up little by little. You can't just start off doing bong rips and expect to be cool, you know? Seriously, I really do- That's quite enough. Oh my god. I do not need to search you, Miss Price. Your words alone have convinced me of your guilt. You will meet me in my office after school for a formal reprimand. Great. Just... <laughs> great. Oh well. Huh. Weirdly, that makes me interested in walking on the state. Cigarette buds. <laughs> Same when I was at school. Students at Blackwell have this herd instinct to glom up into little groups like sheep. And if you just want to be alone, you get labeled like some dangerous outsider. Just like any other prison. Except now the prison follows you wherever you go, thanks to social media. I can't believe Rachel posted a photo of the two of us together last night. Am I still an outsider if I'm hanging out with Rachel Amber now? And what does it mean that hanging out was so awesome? Does that make me just the same as every other student here? Nah. Fuck that. <laughs> I started smoking when I was a sophomore in high school, and it's just been on and off since then. Oh, shoot. No, I don't want to smoke another cigarette. My lungs. My lungs. Students at Black. Okay. Do 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 do. Yeah. Now we gotta like Principal Rail Wales Rocks. Ladies and gentlemen, Principal Wells. <laughs> I 
I don't think like on the other game that that's um, what it showed. Like that graffiti there. Steph and Mikey normally post up somewhere quiet in the courtyard. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Say no to drugs. Winning while doping isn't winning at all. It's a quick trip to the deep end of failure. <laughs> But fire's so pretty. I prefer to wake and bake. But hey, to each their own. Okay, talk to Miss Grant already. Talk to the security guy. Flowers. Flowers always make me think of springtime, which makes me think of summer, which makes me think of getting the fuck away from Blackwell for three whole months. I love flowers. <laughs> this makes being high sound like a bad thing. Heaven's work is actually pretty good. I'd never tell him that, of course. Um, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Scheduling um, appointment for my new tattoo that I'm gonna be getting in Phoenix. Pretty stoked about it. Kitty, what's up, girl? Oh, Carrie Price. Really? It's Chloe. <laughs> oh, right. I'm just teasing. People have been taking me so seriously since I won the Beacon's Young Artist Award for my photography. You don't say. Between that and the Vortex Club, it's hard to keep people from putting me up on a pedestal or whatever. But you know all about that. What, with Rachel Amber? Am I right? There, um... The graphics on this one is a, is a lot clearer. Like, you can see, like, the definition in their faces. They don't look so much like clay characters, I guess you can say. You could, you could see the... You can see better details on their faces than on the first one. And they look like they're younger as well. And sound younger. Uh, Rachel Amber. Wait, what about Rachel Amber? Rachel posted a slamming selfie of you two having the time of your lives. Do tell. Why? Tell what, Victoria? It's a photo. Big deal. But it's on Facebook! I mean, that basically means you and Rachel are, like, BFFs. We're really not. Uh, so, what's she into? You know, what's her thing? Is it drugs? I'm not judging or anything. I figure if she's hanging out with you, she must be into some effed up shit. You know? Jeez. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know why you're talking to me about Rachel. Oh, well, everybody loves her. Little Miss Perfect. Jealous. So you're jealous of Rachel Amber. That's what's happening right now. Gotcha. Oh, God, I don't have time for this. I didn't even finish the chemistry assignment, and you're being you. Oh. Mm. Crap, okay, hold on. Hmm, walk away. Why would Rachel Amber ever hang out with Carrie Price? It's Chloe. It's kind of funny because she disses on Rachel for like doing drugs and everything, and then in the next game she ends up like doing a shitload of drugs with the Vortex Club. Talk about not judgy. Oh, Justin. What's up, bro? What's good? 
Damn, girl. That eye looks sick. What's going on? <laughs> uh, crazy house party. Last night, I scoped out this crazy party at the old mill up north. Kind of a DIY thing. Wow, no shit. I thought that place was like, Math Central. My cousin met this hooker there. Whatever. And... It was cool, okay? You wouldn't understand. He doesn't look like he's stoned. Like how he always was. And he sounds different. Hey, out of the blue question, what do you think of Rachel Amber? She is amazing. Uh, if you're into chicks that are hot, smart, and hot. <laughs> I mean, she helped me out a while back. I was failing algebra hard. I believe you. Check it. After I bombed my midterm last fall, she tutored me for the rest of the semester. And then I crushed it. C plus. Huh. All right. Guess I'll see you in class. Word. Need my DVD from Steph. I bet she's nerding it up with Mikey somewhere. Steph and Mikey. I don't think they're on the other game. Evan. Chloe, I'd like to talk to you about wildfire awareness and prevention. Good morning to you too, Evan. According to the Department of Forestry, over 90% of this season's fires were caused by humans. That's a record high and completely preventable. He kind of looks like my cousin. Hmm. Why are you doing this? This is for college, right? I don't believe you actually care about this. My interest in fire prevention is completely sincere. Besides, I intend to get into college on the strength of my photography alone. Do you think Rachel Amber would be willing to pose for my portfolio? She's so artistic. I bet you would be a dream model. What do you think? I guess. Who says we should prevent fire? Fire is awesome. While I realize you're being purposefully obstructive, you raise a good point. Many parts of our local ecosystem benefit from fire. Knob cone pine cones, for example, which require temperatures above 350 degrees to open. Say knob cone again. No. <laughs> I gotta run. Wait, one last thing. Will you sign my petition to have a fire safety assembly at school? <sighs> sure. Sure. I love assemblies. Some of the best naps of my life. <laughs> wow, thanks. I did not see that coming. You being, you know, interested in complicated issues, helping out with the public. Do you want me to walk away? Do you want me to change my mind? <laughs> I... No. How seriously am I taking this right now? Smoke weed to bear, Evanis and ass clown. Well... We'll there be serious go. about fires. Just don't expect this to become a habit. Oh shoot. My bad. Blackwell Academy. Home of tomorrow's leaders. What? Caring about important issues? Caring in general. You're welcome. The only signature you actually have. Oh wait, we didn't talk to these ladies. This girl over here. Hey, Chloe. Hey, Samantha. What are you reading? Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? I read that last year in Mrs. Hoyda's English class. I didn't think you did homework. <laughs> Normally I don't, but the play was actually good. What did you like about it? It's sad. <laughs> the story is about how relationships only work if people are willing to lie to each other. I'm not sure if you're joking. 
Sorry, I'm a little slow sometimes. I'm a little bitchy sometimes, so it's cool. People always say that. Hey. But I think you're actually... <laughs> Sorry, Chloe. No one says anything like that. I don't know what I'm actually talking about. It's all good. I... Whatever, I don't care what people say anyway. Okay. If I had known the Celestial Avenger was bloodied, I would have totally given him my potion. It was a skill challenge. Potion wouldn't have worked. Skill challenge? It's part of the tabletop game we play. You wouldn't understand. Try me. Give me a break, nerds. I've heard of tabletop games. Cool. Got my DVD? One Blade Runner. Director's Cut coming right up. Sweet. Five bucks, right? Keep it. I'm just glad someone here appreciates the classics. You even asked for the director's cut, which took out the shitty voiceover and replaced it with a sweet dream sequence. Dream life over real life. That's my motto. Right on. Hey, do you know if Rachel's a gamer? Really? Rachel Amber? <laughs> You're asking me? Didn't you two go out last night, or was it just like a friend thing? Oh my god, I'm sorry. Um, what's it to ya? Why do you want to know? <laughs> Steph has a crush. Chloe, <laughs> you should join her game. Yeah, I don't have 50 hours right now. Thanks, though. We're at the end of the campaign, so it'll only take, like, 20 minutes. What else have you got to do before class? Sure. What the hell? Game on, nerds. Here's a character sheet. You are an elf barbarian. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I could totally see myself as an elf barbarian. I know. I'm good. All right. Let's get started. You are both famous heroes in the kingdom of Avernon, a once peaceful land now laid to waste by the bloodthirsty raiders of the Black Well. Alone, you have fought your way through the raider camps, seeking their warlord leader, Durgaron, the Unscarred. As you enter the final camp, bloodied and weary, you see your fellow hero approaching from the opposite direction. I raise my staff to you in greeting. I am Elamon, wizard of the Third Circle, foremost advisor to King Tiberius, and sworn defender of Avernon. <laughs> Introduce your character. Kind of looks like Chloe. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm an elf barbarian named... Uh... Barb? <laughs> um, Calamastia. Calamastia. Oh. I like his shirt. Super into it. Cool Not story, bro. Bad. The I want that shirt. Heroes. Hold on. Elamon narrows his eyes at the elf in front of him and says, I am here to defeat Durgaron, the Unscarred. Durgaron. In the name of King Tiberius, what makes you think you are worthy to fight alongside me? Once made a man kebab. I once stabbed a guy in the chest with a sword, and it went all the way through and killed the guy behind him, too. True story. <laughs> you stand at a three-way crossing. Face. To your left, the raiders' training ground. To your right, their prison camp. Straight ahead, an enormous, ostentatious tent that could only belong to Durgaron, the Unscarred. Which way do you go? Straight ahead, right? We're supposed to kill the Dur dude. Elamon frowns. The raiders could have some good loot at the training ground, and surely it is our duty to free all those prisoners. Your choice, newbie. Where do you wish to go? Mm. 
prison camp. Guess it's time to free some peeps. Let's go to the prison camp. You behold a field of standing iron cages, each imprisoning a human villager, calling out for you to free them. Only a small, elderly dragonkin is keeping watch. He notices you, and in terror, runs into one of the few empty cages and locks himself in. Ah, poor little guy. What's a dragonkin? Dragonkin are like little dragon people. They're assholes. I bet he has all the keys. Oh, okay. Hey, shit face! Get out of there! <laughs> the dragonkin hops up and down, shaking his ring of keys at you. He shouts in a strange language. Whatever he's saying, probably isn't flattering. Got any useful spells in that robe of yours? Nothing that wouldn't blow up the cage and everything in it. Intimidate. That's a skill I have. Can I do that? I want the little bastard to shit his pants. <laughs> you can try. What do you say? Listen up, you little lizard. Unfortunately, he doesn't speak common, which means he can't- I cast communication on the dragonkin. Shit. Really? Now he can understand every word you say. Time to work some real magic. So this is called a skill challenge, where you try to use- Oh, I know what this is. I grab the bars of the cage and lean in, nice and close. He steps back, his scaly skin quivering in fear. What do you say? Meat puppet. I wiggle my hand. Hey, dragon kin guy. Want to become my meat puppet? How it works is I shove my arm up your ass into your head <laughs> and then I can control your mouth from the inside to say things. Uh, he doesn't seem to like that idea. Her face, too. Neither do I. The dragonkin pleads with you. Please don't harm me, tall one. But I cannot give you key. Durgaron, much taller and meaner than you. You're short, I say. But I could fix that. I'll just cut off your head and wear it as a top hat. Then you'd be way taller. Whoa. Good. <laughs> Dragon can cowers before you, looking left and right. He opens his jaws, and you think he's about to yell for help. I interrupt his yell by shoving my axe into the cage, pinning his head to the bars without hurting him. Then I say the following. This is going to be good. Here's what's up. I'm going to carve the skin from your bones. Then I'm going to turn your skin into a little leather handbag that I'll shove your skinless body into so I can carry it around with me wherever I go. That way, the next time some asshat refuses to give me a key I want, I can pull your body out and show them what happens. How does that sound? Uh, wow. <laughs> that was nuts. I'm going to give you a plus 10 bonus to charisma. Go ahead and roll. A small pool of urine collects under the elderly dragonkin as, hands trembling, it hands you the keys. Then, it dies of fear. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Go team. Why don't you start unlocking the prisoners? I'm on it. As you free them, the prisoners run away from you in fear. What's next? I've never, like, actually played this game. Dungeons and Dragons. I kind of want to know. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, more Lord's Tent. It's tent time. Wait, have you ever gotten a training camp? There's potential loot there. Okay. How did I miss that? I live for loot. Let me pick again. Where do you wish to go? Training ground. Loot sounds good. Let's go to the training ground. Sweet. Upon arriving at the training ground, you are spotted by a heavy set orc who immediately shouts and points. There are a dozen raiders on the training field, all of whom raise their weapons and charge. Okay. So, what do we do? I cast Urgle's Acid Blast. Um, overkill? Bam! You conjure up a wave of acid that washes over the charging orcs. Every raider suddenly starts screaming and writhing in pain. There's a sweet and sour kind of smell as the flesh melts off their bones like warm candle wax. 
Holy shit. You see why I haven't really needed a partner? The heavyset orc sergeant still remains. He runs at you swinging a massive warhammer. All yours. Fatal cleave, palm, palm mill strike, fatal cleave, knee slam. I do a pommel strike. I strike his pommel hard. <laughs> um, what did I say? A pommel is the end of a sword handle. Pommel strike is where you hit the guy with it. Ah, damn it. Okay, I do that. Except you're not wielding a sword, you're wielding an axe. This sucks. It's all right. Try using your- You've delayed too long. What? The orc swings his war hammer at your head, barely missing your move. Fatal cleave. Okay, let's end this. Fatal cleave. You swing your great axe downward with both hands. The orc blinks, then splits open like a hot dog bun. Nice. Fuck yeah, I'm awesome at this <laughs> game. It's going well. What about the loot? Well, as the training ground is now a roiling pit of acid, it's unlikely any loot survived. Damn. Aww. We all make mistakes. Don't worry, Alamon guy. We all make mistakes. Alamon nods. Calamastia, <laughs> the elf barbarian, is most wise and forgiving. What's next? Warlord it's tent time. You enter the tent to find Durgaron, warlord of the raiders of the Black Well, sitting comfortably at his throne. He's a huge red-eyed minotaur, swathed in a fine black cloak, gripping a two-handed sword that's easily six feet long. His laughter bellows. Wah, ha, 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 ha. Your lands and people are already mine. Your deeds here mean nothing. Your kingdom was weak. You are weak. What an asshole. I got this. I cast Zael's Cataclysmic Cone of Fire. The fire fizzles out on contact. Durgeron laughs again, holding up his right arm to show off his bracer of fire immunity. Shit. All of my battle spells are fire-based. Except for, you know, Acid Blast which someone used unnecessarily to show off for Chloe. Calamastia? What'll it be? Mm -hmm. Annihilation strike. That sounds good. <gasps> Holy shit! Uh, annihilation strike! That sounds boss as fuck! One? Oh. That's bad, right? Not for me. As you take your first step, you trip on a rock collapsing onto the ground in a clangy jumble of metal. Your axe swings wildly to the side. Mikey, roll a reflex save. Oh no, three. Your axe strikes Elamon's leg. Um, legs, plural. Severing both feet at the ankles. <laughs> this game is awesome. My feet? Durgeron moves toward the crippled <laughs> Elmon. Oh, shit! I told you this was my best boss. You didn't tell me my character might die. Durgeron approaches, stomping his bloody hooves. Stomp, stomp, stomp. This is all my fault. Sort of. What should I do? I jump in front of Elmon. Wow. Thanks, Chloe. I mean, thanks, Calamastia. Okay. Durgeron has now turned his attention toward you. Bring it. He charges, thrusting madly with his great sword. Shit! Oh, no. Your attempt to dodge his thrust fails. Durgeron laughs as he impales you on his blade, lifting you high into the air. Seriously? I can't do anything with that stupid bracer. I'm sorry, Chloe. Hey, I <laughs> chopped your feet off. We're even. You feel your strength draining away as Durgeron lifts you higher into the air. It hurts like hell. What do you do? Hmm. 
I bring my axe down onto his arm. The one with the fire bracer thingy. Oh, brilliant. You'll have to roll high to hit. You're almost dead. 20. Fuck nice. yes. You bring your axe down in a wicked chop, severing his arm completely. His bracer of fire immunity clangs to the ground. I cast Gignomi's Fire Strike of Flame. Oh, snap. Lying on the ground, you conjure a flaming spear, which flies from your hands to spear Durgeron in the chest, incinerating him completely from the inside out. Damn, Elamon. Durgeron is defeated, but your wounds were too great. I'm afraid Calamastia is Aww. dead. I actually feel sad right now. <laughs> Better to have died a hero than live as a coward. That was fun. That was cool. Check out what I drew. Mikey's got serious drawing skills. When did you draw this, dude? We were like in the middle of that game. <laughs> that is cool. Glad you enjoyed it, Chloe. Yeah. I'll adventure with you anytime. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for the game, nerds. That was cool. DVD, check. Next stop, chemistry class. Joy. This tree is cool. Blue, green, and white, and brown. I like it. Okay. got here twitch don't call me that true north a jock so dumb he makes jocks look bad guess nathan prescott made the shit list oh wow this is some really weird crap prescott it's not yours give it back i hate that you're on the team now you're such a loser Guys, no need to fight. You can both be losers. The mute speaks? Whoa, whoa! You earn a spot on the squad, Twitch. You don't have your dad try to buy off the coach. At least my family pays tuition. How much financial aid does your deadbeat dad need again? Jeez. Wow. Dick move, Nathan. My dad lost his job at the shipyard when your dad closed it down. And you want to talk shit to me? Leave Nathan alone. You know something, Prescott? I'm going to do you a favor. You can't be a part of the team and be into this stupid crap at the same time. You're a piece of shit. I am going stop to it. kill you. You guys, stop. Chloe, do something. Don't just stand there watching. I mean, of course we're gonna step in. Today is the day where we're supposed to stand up to bullies. Spirit day, we're stepping in, the of course. The only way to stop a bully is to be aggressive. I've got to put Drew down. Back off, idiot. What the hell did you just say to me? Idiot. You're not used to a word that big, are you? Don't be scared. You're seriously defending Nathan Prescott? How about picking on someone your own size? Which I hear is pretty small. You're such a crazy freak. Mind your own business. You have no idea how crazy I am. Keep pushing and find out. You want a piece of this? You mean your budding bromance with Nathan? You're clearly into him. Just pull his hair already. <laughs> <laughs> did you just laugh? I did. Chloe just owned you. Shut the fuck up, fresh meat. You shut the fuck up. 
Go Samantha. Guess you got lucky this time, Prescott. Had two girls show up to save you. Take your pervy picture book. Kirk. Are you okay? You think I need help? From you? You're welcome. Are you alright? Oh, now it's security comes. People think just because of his family. Everything okay here? <laughs> no problem, Skip. <laughs> kind of late there, buddy. I don't like how we left things. We'll talk more tonight. Perfect. Is that sarcastic? Perfect. No. Okay, Dan. Oh, wait. Can we go check on Nathan? No. Guess not. Alrighty. I'm late to class. That's just one more excuse for mom to sick David on me. That pick would actually make a sweet tattoo. <laughs> Maybe if I delay going inside long enough, Blackwell will be overrun by future excellence and by future. Oh, good. You're here. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your hest to say so. Good. Admired Miranda, indeed worth what's dearest in the world. Many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time have listened to... Many a time, the harmony of their tongues Hath I listened to- Hayden, you're killing me. You've had weeks to be off book. Sorry, Mr. Keaton. No, don't apologize to me. Apologize to your scene partner who's been very accommodating, and to your <laughs> other fellow actors, and most of all, to yourself. Mr. Keaton, sorry to interrupt, but does this look better? I had my mom take it in a bit. Rachel looks awesome. This is getting as surreal as last night. Looking good, Rach. Very cool. Exquisite, Rachel, as always. Mr. Keaton, I'm still having trouble with... My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. I mean, does she really mean that? Especially because I just straight out told her I've been banging all the ladies. <sighs> oh my god. Yeah, that is hard. We've talked about that line forever. We need a fresh perspective. The question is, are Miranda's feelings of instant passion for Ferdinand just inexperience in dramatic circumstances, or has she actually just met the love of her life? What do you think? She says that part as she's talking to us. Has she just met the love of her life? Hmm, aw, they're all babies. It's so cute. Um... It's true love. Sometimes, when you meet someone who's going to change your life, you just know it, I guess. Also, you've got parents coming to see the show, right? At 20 bucks a ticket, it's gotta be true love. <laughs> wow. A romantic and a cynic. That actually kinda helps me. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Keaton. Later. See you later, guys. Oh, no. I have first period improv with a class full of freshmen now. Your eye looks fabulous. Where'd you get it done? Uh, what? <laughs> Just kidding. That asshole really clocked you. It wasn't a big deal. I'll just be a minute. Okay, so... 
Why am I here again? Oh, could you grab my belt for me? I think it's in my bag over there. Uh, y yeah, sure. So okay. we're bros now? Uh, get the belt. Don't say any stupid shit and don't, like, fall down. <laughs> Should be doable, right? Aw, so cute. She's all shy. Hey now, sharing is caring. <laughs> I have feelings about this. Most of them are not good. <laughs> Why do theater kids take themselves so seriously? Okay. The Tempest, Rachel Amber playing Prospera. Prospera. A newcomer to Blackwell Academy. Oh, so she's a new student. Rachel Amber blew, off the, blew the doors off her audition with a heartbreaking reading of Blanche from Tennessee Williams, a streetcar named Desire. Other interests include athletes Athletics, debate team, boosty, booster, fundraiser, local history, and in nature. Rachel, bleh. Rachel, bleh. Rachel hopes to one day grace the stages of Broadway and the silver screen of Hollywood. <laughs> Nathan, he's just all mad. Playing Caliban. A favorite son of the oldest and most influential family in Arcadia Bay, Nathan hopes this performance of The Tempest will only further the legacy of the Prescott's name of at Arcadia Bay. Playing Caliban has been a challenge for the sophomore who enjoys sports, photography, and casual hangouts with his many friends. I never had to like read this book in high school. The only one I had to read was Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, and Hamlet. Dana War play Miranda. Look, they're just babies. They're so cute. He's, okay, so they're sophomores. So I'm guessing Chloe is also a sophomore. A sophomore, Dana has performed in two other productions at Blackwell Academy since her freshman year. Dana enjoys football, go Bigfoots, social media, and school dances. She hopes to be a member of the Vortex Club when she's a senior. Does she become a member? I don't remember if she becomes a member or not. I think she's the one that gets pregnant. Hayden Jones. We all know Hayden. He was the one who was a pothead. <laughs> Kept trying to get Max to like smoke with him and everything. Uh, 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 uh. The show marks the introduction of Hayden Jones to Blackwell Academy's drama club. His audition on a dare and it turns out actually really digs acting a sophomore his other interests include playing sports herbals and taking long walks in the woods juliet watson or is juliet the one who was smoking i mean not smoking who was pregnant i think dana's the one that got pregnant um, Juliet's primary interests include journalism and social activism, but she is very excited to be debuting the spring in her role of Ariel. The capricious and powerful spirit of Prospera has enchanted and bound to her magical bidding. Travis Keaton directing. A veteran of Broadway, Travis Wilbur Keaton serves a prestigious Blackwell Academy as a teacher of the dramatic arts, mentor, and friend. He hopes this humble reinterpretation of Shakespeare's masterpiece can inspire the next generation of the country's leaders to strive for greatness and never to forget his motto Eris Gratte Artis mm, Manager Steph Tech Crew Adam Sound Design Brooke Program cover poster Evan okay this poster definitely says something <laughs> I 
I would have never took Rachel, Rachel into, like, so happy here. being into, like, hard rock music or heavy metal or anything, or punk music. More like, maybe R&B or hip-hop or something. There's Rachel's bell. Guess I'll go give this to Rachel now. R.A. R.A. will suck as Prospera. If V.C. had any talent, maybe she would have gotten the part. Talent? Is that what got Mr. K to cast you, slut? <laughs> Guess they don't call it Drama Lab for nothing. Comment. What to say, what to say. Bitter much. <laughs> Playing the part of the bitter, passed over, talentless hack, VC. <laughs> Alrighty. I guess the Prescott donation doesn't cover this. If I'd known acting meant getting to play with weapons, I totally would have auditioned for the uh, the Tempest. Pepe. Sweet caller, Pepe. Should be life is drama. Rachel Amber, drama star and guardian angel. I still can't believe that was her last night. Save my life. Get some ink. <laughs> oh man, we missed stuff again. Mm, moving canvas, dead guy, dead white guy, happy brat, the old car. Sometimes you just gotta turn up the heat. <laughs> no, was you, Aiden? Must be a hundred costumes in here. <laughs> Am I the only student who's not in this show? I'm gonna guess it's from. Yeah, you are very beautiful. Logan. Do you want to go out? I would be into that. Logan, guess who? Logan, guess who? What the heck? <laughs> Uh, Rachel? Is this your belt? Yes! <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bring it to her, throw the belt over. <laughs> it's gonna end up whacking her. Here you go. Ow! <laughs> I didn't say attack me with it. Shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Chloe Price. Rachel Amber. Last night was amazing. I, I, I'd never seen Firewalk live. Pretty fierce show. We'll have to do it again. To tell the truth, I went to bed last night wishing it never had to end. But then I thought, why? Why does it have to end? Maybe it doesn't uh, have to end. Exactly. How would you like to join me on a little field trip? Fuck yes. I was born to ditch. I hoped you'd say that. Now about that eye, that is a hell of a battle scar. Do you want me to cover it up with some makeup? 
Mm, no, it's fine. Are you kidding? This is a badge of honor. Respect. <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here. Rachel totally flirting with us. You sure you don't want to just grab the bus or? Nope. If we're going to go rogue, we're doing it right. Well? What the hell am I getting into? <laughs> Chloe's death wish. Where does this thing <laughs> so go? Get off of me. <laughs> Maybe we'll end up in Seattle. Pull up a chair, Price. The view's amazing. Hey, why weren't you and Kim? Everything okay? Yep. What happened with you? People say you were awesome. Yeah, let's talk later. Okay. Rachel wants me to pull up a chair. Maybe one of these crates. Guess we're not the first ones to hop on this train. I wonder what the symbols mean. Whoa. Nathan's dad is a Terminator? That totally checks out. I feel pretty confident there's going to be a dead body in here. Just another typical day, skipping school, with Rachel Amber. Things heavier than it looks. Guess I should sit down. All right, Chloe, you're on a freaking train with Rachel freaking Amber. Play it cool. Is this <laughs> nervousness? Is that what this feeling is? Wish Max were here so I could ask. Just staring at each other. <laughs> Should I make small talk? Is that what people do? Nice weather we're having. It's nice weather we're having. What? The, the weather? It's nice. It sure is. <laughs> so, it's kind of weird that we're hanging out. You mean because I don't hang out with anyone and I don't have any friends? You have friends. Well, I used to. Friend. Singular. Her name is Max, but she left for greener, more northern pastures. That sucks. Hey, so... I want to say thanks. For pulling you out of school? No, dummy. Thanks for last <laughs> night. Jeez. Ah. If you hadn't shown up... Assholes abound in Arcadia Bay. I owe you. That's for sure. Is that why you came along? Are you suggesting I should need a reason to ditch school? I bet you're wondering what we're doing. The thought occurred, yeah. Well... I wanted some company. Cool. That's it? That's it. Mm. Good to fucking go. Anything beats another second in Blackwell. You really hate it there, don't you? You don't? 
Right. What reason would Rachel Amber have for hating Blackwell Academy? You're high school royalty. You don't know me. Yet. Let's do something fun. V-card's been punched, Rachel. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> Too far. Well, I don't know. Her eyes. Okay, something fun. Oh my god. I'm all ears. Two truths and a lie. What? I think we should play Two Truths and a Lie. It's a game where each person offers up three facts about themselves. Two of which are the truth, and one of which is... A lie. Right. And then the other person has to guess which is which. Okay. Sure. Sounds fun. You're on. <sighs> I'll start. First, I'm ambidextrous. Second, I was born in New York, the land of fashion and Broadway. To which I will one day return when my heinous exile here in Arcadia Bay comes to an end. New York, huh? I've never been. Not a world traveler? Not yet, at least. If you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Russia, Greece, Kathmandu? Kathmandu? One day, I'm going to climb Everest. And I thought moving away from Arcadia Bay was ambitious. What's your third thing? My third thing? Two truths and a lie. You say three things. Right. I'm a Leo. Meow. She's a Leo. Okay. So, ambidextrous, born in New York, and a Leo. Gotcha. So, which is the lie? I know she's a Leo, because I remember on the the note from the first one where she was just... She was saying something to Frank, and then she's like, I'm a Leo, or something like that, so... Um... We know that she's a new student, so she might be from New York? I'm gonna say she's amb... The lie is she's ambidextrous. I don't buy the ambidextrous claim. No? Well, that's too bad, because it's true. Uh. Prove it. Sign your name with both hands. Sign where? Seriously? All the bad girls do it. Come on. Damn. I'm afraid the lie was New York. That's cool. I'm a Cali girl, born mm. and raised. So, New York's on the bucket list. Broadway, here I come. Cool. Okay, your turn, Bryce. First fact. Right. Something about myself. Should I start things off with a lie or with the truth? Or should I cheat? Mm. Let's see how good she really is at this game. We'll tell a lie first. I'm allergic to cats. That seems like the most logical. Sad to say this, since you're a Leo and all, but I'm allergic to cats. Are you now? Swear. I love science. Seriously. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson is the shit. <laughs> huh. I used to love country music when I was a kid. Now it makes me want to throw up. Literally. That's... weird. <laughs> You're hella mysterious, Chloe Price. Uh, hella? <laughs> Who says that? It's a Cali thing. Anyway, 
I think I have your number. I'm not sure why country music makes you throw up. I'm a complex girl, Rachel. I think it's probably true. Also, I kind of like the Dixie Chicks. You and David both. No accounting for taste. Who's David? He's, ah, <laughs> the, the guy my mom's seeing, I guess. Oh. And you don't like him? Mm -mm. <laughs> it's still so weird that she's dating someone. My dad and my mom, <laughs> they were totally in love. You can tell how fucked up she is now just by how she's settling for David. He's this total hard-ass ex-military jagoff type. Like, the opposite of my dad. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. David has no respect. He acts like I'm some kind of problem to solve. Sometimes I am a problem, though. That's a load of bullshit. I'm sorry I said anything. It sounds like the only problem is David. You need to hit him where it hurts. <laughs> the only thing that David loves has four wheels and a four-barrel carburetor. Oh, God. A muscle car? I'm probably going to steal it soon, so... Let me know if you need an accomplice. Okay. You say you love science, but you are failing chemistry. How do you know I'm You're failing? Saying failing chemistry means I hate science. Or that Blackwell doesn't inspire your best work. Well, <laughs> sure. It's not for everyone. I get that. Anyway, school sucks, but you love science. I'm gonna say true. Which? Which brings me to your alleged cat allergy. Alleged? I'm calling lie. Why is that? I mean, maybe you're allergic. But I've passed by your locker a few times. And I've seen that old photo of a cat you keep in there. Wow, so she was... Watching us? I want to say stalker, just cause. You've passed by my locker? <laughs> Stalker much? Hey, I notice things. I can't help it. I guess you're no stranger to being noticed, too. It's kind of new for me. Mm. Well, get used to it. So, if my math is correct, you told me two truths and one lie. What? You expected me to cheat? Winners make their own rules, Chloe. You are crazy good at this game. A lifetime of studying the human condition. Well, I'm impressed. I bet it's hard to impress Chloe Price. I'm gonna feel good about that one. When your dad is the district attorney, I guess lying is something you're used to. Seriously? Seriously. I know who to call if I need to get out of a ticket then. Not that I have a right of my own. Car first. Embarrassing number of moving violations second. Hey, thanks for trusting me. Trusting you? You played the game. Also, you told me about that dickwad David. Now he's <laughs> on my shit list too. Hell yeah. Mustache brain won't know what hit him. I guess. You opened up a lot, that's all. It's not a big deal. I hate to break it to you, but Chloe Price is not exactly renowned throughout Arcadia Bay as a bastion of trust and empathy. Trust doesn't exactly come easy to me. Maybe if you'd had my life, you'd understand. No, I get that. On the other hand, I got on this train with you, didn't I? Fair point. Wouldn't mind listening to some music.
listen alone. <laughs> God. Hey. Who would want to listen to their music listen? alone? I'm sad. I mean, I always listen to my music alone, but like if I was with someone who I liked, I would, of course, offer it. so cute together like I could see why uh Chloe was trying to like search for her in the last game and everything she fell in love with her right from the start oh my sucker for little love stories I like how it's um I like how like nowadays they're putting like a lot of gay characters into their games. It's, I think it's pretty cool. We need more games like this to get all the nerds hopes high. bracelet I've had it I guess since I was a kid in Long Beach it reminds it's me someone that Frank that takes more to experience or out there than just she gives him day. maybe one day I'll go back to Long Beach or anywhere but here maybe sooner than later hmm it's so sad me too Arcadia Bay can suck a bag of dicks. Sometimes I feel like I've got no reason to stay. Don't be surprised, Chloe, if one day I'm just out of here. Let me know if you need an accomplice. Check it out! We're here! What? Where is here? Jump and find out! Did you say jump? Jump! Oh my god. Um, okay. <laughs> Fuck it. I would never actually jump off a train. There'd be no way. <laughs> I'd be way too scared. But like, you crazy, you crazy hoe. I ain't jumping off of no train. <laughs> That's so sad. Like she's so, she's so like, she puts herself out there and she's, Trying so hard to get out of Arcadia Bay and she never makes it. R Rachel. Well, I guess Chloe too, if you chose to sacrifice her, which I did not. But I'm kind of like, I kind of want to see what happens with like Chloe and the life that she has like after if you chose to save her. <laughs> Like where her and Max ended up going afterwards. After like the whole sacrificing Arcadia Bay where they actually went. Or if you did like sacrifice Chloe where Max went at least. She's probably still in Arcadia Bay. She probably becomes a famous photographer or something. She's probably super depressed. Seems like such a happy game, and I just like got all of my fails just thinking about. Hey, it's actually Chloe pretty nice and everything. View. Glad you approve. And as your reward for making it up here, I have a new game for us to play. Another one. I like games. Deal with it. This mm -hmm. is what I learned in theater class. I believe she likes games. She ended up hooking up with Chloe, Nathan, Jefferson. And Frank. Like, I like the game and where it's headed and everything, but just to know, like, her background of that she ended up hooking up with all these people kind of makes me like, eh. 
Don't do it, Chloe. Don't fall it's for all her. about improvisation. I don't act. I know all the world's a stage and shit, but I'm not an actor. Really? I see you acting like you're tough all the time in school. I... <laughs> that's... Damn it. <laughs> this game involves spying on people from afar. Luckily, we've got some high-tech surveillance equipment right here. Let's fire it up. Calm down. That blows. Well, shit. <laughs> That was my last quarter. You? Quarterless. Damn. Hey, maybe I can MacGyver something up. I've been told I'm pretty handy. Oh yeah? Let's see what you got. Sorry about Drew. Not your fault. My brother's- oh! So his, uh, brother is a big jock football player, dude. That's cool. Well, nobody's gonna end up picking, a picking on him. Okay. Rachel really wants to use this viewfinder. I'd love to get it working for her. Anything for Rachel. <laughs> well, um, I know I said I was going to finish this episode and this video, but that's not going to happen because I have to start getting for work here in a little bit. And yeah, so we will definitely finish the last part of this episode in the next video. So, so yeah, I'm really liking the game so far. I think it's super cute and I like how we get to see like the softer, softer side of Chloe and how she met Rachel and how they started becoming a thing. So I think that's really cool to put that into this game. Um, but yeah, so if you guys liked the video, like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall talk to you cool kids later. Peace.